Today, we've got the Joe Biden versus Donald Trump general election map based on the polling as of early February. I did this a couple of months ago. People seem to enjoy it. And I put out my official prediction the other day. But this is going to be the map just based on the current polling. So theoretically, this is how it might go if the election were held today. Now, there's a lot of places you could get the polling and the data. I took most of it from 270 to win. They average out whatever recent polling there might be. Now, the thing to keep in mind is there's going to be more polls for the key battleground states. Some states don't have much polling, or the polling is from more than three or four months ago. So there's not much I can do about that. I'll put in the data when I can find it. The thing to focus on here is pretty much going to be the margins in the states that are not considered safe for one side or the other. And there's still nine months to go. A lot can change. But I think most people know by now that the last several months of polling across most of the states has been pretty bad for Biden. So let's find out just how bad it is. Let's put in the safe states first. These are going to be over a 10-point margin. So first for Biden. He's going to get Hawaii and the usual West Coast. After that, we're going to go to the East Coast. We're going to give him Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. And the last thing we're going to give him is the first congressional district in Maine. Now let's put in the safe states for Trump. He's going to get the usual red states from Idaho and Utah all the way across to South Carolina in the east. Now one state he's not going to get safe is Alaska. That's a tough state to pull and there's not anything recent. So using the most recent data, it is going to be under 10 for Trump. Now a couple more states that are also going to go safe are going to be Ohio. That does just crack double digits. And also down in the Sunshine State, Trump's home state of Florida, that is going to hit double digits and go safe for Trump. And the last thing we could give to Trump is also going to be in Maine, and that is going to be the second congressional district. Now, if we go down to the likely states, these are between a five and a 10 point margin. Biden is going to get Colorado. Last time that was at a lead margin. This time it's going to be likely. He's also going to get New Mexico as well as Illinois, although there's not really any new polling since I last did this video. In the Northeast, also likely for Biden, it's going to be New Hampshire. Also Connecticut, that's another state without any recent polling, but the one that was there did have it at a nine point advantage, so likely for Biden. Now, let's not forget about about New York. The most recent Siena College poll had it at a nine point advantage for Biden. So that's a little unusual, but it is going to go likely for Biden. The last likely state for Biden is going to be Virginia. So as of right now, if Illinois or New York ended up getting down to single digits, then I would expect it to be close to a landslide for Trump. Now let's put in the likely states for Trump. First, he's going to get Alaska. The next likely state he's going to get is going to be Texas. That's the same margin he won it by last time, as well as North Carolina. That would be an improvement for Trump. He's also going to get I Iowa, that is close to a safe margin, but it's still at likely. And then he's going to have two flips that are going to go likely. That's going to be Nevada as well as Georgia. Nevada was right at five points, so that is borderline lane likely. But already we can see that this is a map with a lot more red in it than 2020. Now let's fill out the rest of these states, and they're all going to be lean margins except for one. Let me first get that one out of the way, and that's going to be Maine at large. The recent poll there showed Biden ahead only by one point. One point or less for me is a tilt margin. I don't think it's going to be that close in the end, but that's the data I've got, so it is going to go tilt for Biden. One other side note is going to be Nebraska's second congressional district. This is another place that has no polling whatsoever. It is a blue trending district, but based on the rest of these results, I'm going to put it as a tilt for Trump. Now, the rest of these are under five-point margins. Let's start in the West, in Arizona. This is going to go to Trump. It's not quite a five-point margin, but Trump is going to get it by a lean margin. Next, let's head east and north to Minnesota. Whatever polling there is right now, it actually looks like it's going to be competitive. It's not going to flip, but Biden is going to get it by a lean margin. Next door, we've got Wisconsin. And the last video I did on this, Biden was getting it by a lean margin. That's changed. This time, Trump is up by about two and a half, so he's going to get it by a lean margin. And it's actually going to be a similar story here in Michigan. The polls right now do average out to give it to Trump by a lean margin. And we've got one state left, and that is going to be Pennsylvania. In the previous polling video I did, this easily went to Trump. This time, it's actually a different story. It's going to Biden by about one and a half. So Biden's going to claim PA by a lean margin. So that's it. The final total comes out to 294 for Donald Trump, 244 for Joe Biden. So it looks like it's almost, but not quite a comfortable win for Trump. And do I think this is exactly how it would go if the election were held today? No, of course not. But I do think Trump is far more likely to win than to lose if the election were held today. But of course, I think Maine at large getting down to a tilt is very unlikely, as well as Illinois and New York getting down to single digits. Georgia 
in Nevada, going over five for Trump also might be a bit of a stretch. But you never know. Maybe that's actually what's going to happen. Now, there's nine months out. I do expect some things to change. But when and how much of those changes going to be is the question. A lot of voters don't really pay a lot of attention to politics up until the last month or so. And if Biden is in this bad of a position right now, I would imagine he's going to put out some executive orders to try to get his base to rally around him. And outside of a couple of issues, almost everything seems to favor Trump at the moment. But Trump does have his baggage. A lot of voters are going to come out just to vote against him. And he could get convicted at one of his trials. But at the same time, a lot of disaffected voters want to come out specifically to vote for Trump. And Biden is in office right now. He's got a track record to answer for. It's not looking pretty for him. He's hoping the economic sentiment turns around. Voters forget about the border. And the Israel-Hamas conflict does not alienate large parts of its base. But this is the map based on the current polling between Biden and Trump. So let me know in the comments. Would Trump win if the election were held right now? And what is going to change over the next nine months? Is Trump going to do even better than this map? Or is Trump going to be too scary and Biden manages to somehow turn it all around? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.